So welcome to July. You'll have to forgive me, I'm a little bit out of the habit of this because the end of last month's video was a bit weird. I just sort of left you with the, the total so far. And then I realised I'm a week into July and I haven't really updated you on what's been happening or where I am. So hopefully this turns out okay because a lot's happened. I think I left you with the blocking of my Maywick, which is a jumper from this book, The Shetland Trader. And I'd sort of been moaning about, uh, well, I'd been having difficulty with gauge and that's why I blocked it. And I was able to achieve the right gauge after blocking. It's just a bit short, I reckon, for my taste, which is a bit of a shame. And I sort of ummed and ahed about whether to lengthen it before I joined for the sleeves. But because I'm sort of doing this stash busting, and I was a little bit nervous about yardage, I decided against that. I now will probably have more than enough yarn to have done it anyway, so I'm a little bit miffed about that. But also, joining for the sleeves went terribly. I complained a little bit about the instructions, which I don't know, it might just be me, because I don't knit a lot of seamless sweaters, I don't do a lot of this sort of modern multi-size knitting. But yeah, I... <sighs> I was able to join the sleeves okay, I was able to get them all on the same circular needle, but then what really threw me was the underarm decreases because, hang on, let me show you. Oh, I think I just lost my stitch marker. Yeah, there it is. So this shell pattern, razor shell pattern or whatever they call it, requires you to do a central decrease and a yarn over to complete the pattern. However, as soon as you start decreasing, you have an incomplete pattern. So you have a central three stitch decrease, so you decrease two stitches in the, in the middle, and then the yarn overs are either side of that central decrease. But if, for example, you've decreased this part of the pattern for the armhole, so you don't have a yarn over here anymore, you're decreasing more stitches than you need to in the middle. So my stitch counts were out. At one point I was increasing and I'm not sure how I even managed to do that given that I was trying to do like eight decreases per round and yet my stitch count was going up. Still, it just, it was just a nightmare. I had to completely rip back, which is also really annoying because of course you're splicing, I've lost the stitch marker again. This is why I hate these little plastic things. Anyway, you're splicing the yarns together to create the stripes. So when you go wrong, you've suddenly got like this weird magic ball and you have been have changed colour exactly at the point you thought you needed to. But actually, guess what? It's now not the point you needed it to because you've done it wrong. So you have to re-splice it and sometimes it's too long and sometimes it's too short in the colour. <sighs> it was, it's just, it's not been a fun experience. <laughs> I am now, however, at the point where I have joined the sleeves, you can see, and I'm doing this simultaneous set-in sleeve shaping, which I've never done before. You can still see, despite me blocking it, it is still biasing. So just a touch, maybe it's less obvious for you. Mixed feelings about this one currently. I'm hoping when it's done, I'll feel much better about it. But um, currently, I'm just it's just annoying me. It's just... It's just frustrating, really. You can also see I'm a little bit disappointed with my colour choices. The way it's worked out, my greys and browns, there's not really very much contrast between them. So it just sort of from a distance looks like a block of grey randomly. Oh well, this is kind of the nature of doing these scrap busting stashy projects. I didn't know that was going to happen and I could have changed it while I was doing it. But because I was so focused on the decreases, it didn't occur to me. But I'm plodding along, I'm very nearly finished, so we'll see. When it's done, we'll see. One of the other things I thought I would mention is we're coming up to a year of stash busting, and um, I haven't made anywhere near as much progress as I thought I would have, and I'm a little bit mortified by that. It's also getting to the time of year where the moths are coming back and my room is still a mess. I still don't have all the, enough space to store my yarn safely and properly. It's just stressing me out a little bit at the minute knitting. I also keep going wrong with things. It's causing me pain for the first time. It's never happened before. I'm getting terrible like wrist and arm pain and I do a lot of knitting and I always have done and I'm doing less knitting now than I have done for a while so I don't... 
I don't understand why I've suddenly developed pain like this after quite a substantial break. It's almost like I've lost the knack or something. I don't know. So speaking of disasters, you may remember me talking about wanting to use this cotton to make another Buddlier blouse, which is a pattern that I, uh, a vintage pattern that I graded up and is available for free on Ravelry. And it had already gone wrong once, but I wanted to persevere and I got to the underarm point, ready to cast on for the sleeves. And I realized I dropped a stitch. Not the end of the world, I thought. I'll just, it wasn't that far back. I'll just rip back a few rows and pick it up and redo the last couple of repeats or whatever. No, I, uh, I went to, <laughs> I went to rip it back and the entire thing, it just like imploded. I think because it's like a continuous lace pattern and maybe the cotton yarn I was using, I don't know. It just sort of all went pfft. And I tried to unravel it and rip it out, you know, and reclaim the yarn. And I just ended up with an enormous knot. And it just, like, I, I don't know what I did. I don't know how I was able to do it. But it was just, it, it was just a mess. It was just a tangled mess. There was no way I could salvage it. I ended up doing something which I really hate doing, particularly because of the whole point of this stash busting is, like, to use every scrap. I just ended up binning it. It was partly frustration, having having had it gone wrong twice already. I was also in the middle of that sleeve joining issues for the Maywick. I was just sort of done. I was like, no, I can't be dealing with this. I just don't have the energy. So I binned it. Not my proudest moment. And what I did instead was I cast on using the same cotton for a ranunculus. Now I've seen this pattern so often and uh, it's one of those I've it's been on like my favorites on Ravelry for a really long time and then I saw Kat from Heather and Hops make a linen version which was you know I think hers was a four ply and I had this two ply cotton and I thought oh I really like that idea sort of as a sort of summery top as opposed to a big winter jumper because I don't tend to wear big winter jumpers like that and I thought this would be a better use of what I have in my stash and what I need in my wardrobe I don't know. I don't even know what happened. Actually, I do know what happened. Again, I dropped a stitch. I think knitting at a loose gauge with cotton like this that isn't very grippy and metal needles, it's just really slippery and you have to be more careful. And I was watching the telly and I wasn't paying attention and I dropped a stitch. And the stitch I happened to drop was right at the point of the German short row shaping turn. It, I don't know what happened. Like, it just, it just came apart. It just, there was a hole. And I, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't fix it. And um, in a fit of frustration, it came off the needles. To be honest with you, I wasn't thrilled with the way it was going anyway. Um, you do a tubular cast on. I don't like tubular cast ons. I don't like the way they look. I also don't find them any stretchier or it wasn't any stretchier for this cotton. I still don't think I would have been able to get my head through here. So part of me is like, maybe this cotton is just not for me and it's gonna get rehomed. So in a fit of rage, while every other project was going wrong, I cast on a new project. Of course I did. I've become that person now. I just wanted something that felt familiar to me, that felt well within my comfort zone. And so what I've ended up doing for a very long time, I've had a pattern from this book, which is Practical Knitting Illustrated by Margaret Murray and Jane Costa. It's this classic jersey. There are PDFs of this available to buy online. They're technically not public domain. That's a debate for another time. This is a very well known and readily available as well. I mean, I see copies of this in charity shops all the time. And this classic jersey has been in my queue. It's been at the top of my queue for a really long time. And I've sort of had different ideas about what I wanted to do with this particular pattern. At one point, I thought maybe I would try making it on my knitting machine. At one point, I thought I would try making it seamless in the round before I realised I don't like doing that. <laughs> I'd just rather knit flat pieces and seam them up. I get a better fit that way. I get less bored when knitting things that way, particularly if it's stocking stitch. But I haven't started on that design because... The, the yarn I originally intended, I don't think I'm going to have the yardage for. So what I've done instead is I'm making it like a scrappy stash busting design. And I've taken inspiration from, this is a 1946 edition of Stitchcraft. It's come apart. Uh, again, found this one in a charity shop. The back cover is missing. But they have, their first pattern is what they call a harlequin jumper. And they're like intarsia sort of 
colour block designs. And uh, I've seen a, a couple of other 40s and 50s jumpers this style. And I had a lot of, from my sort of Fair Isle colourwork Penelope jumper, which there's a pattern for in my Kofi shop, if you're interested. It looks like this. I had lots of um, the yarns I used for that left over. So I have red and black, a little of, bit of purple, a little of grey and a little of cream. And these are King Cole Touch of Merino 4-ply. And they're a bit thick for vintage weight, but that's okay. The jumper will just end up being a bit bigger. Yeah, I'm just sort of freestyling it. I haven't charted it out. I'm just kind of following vaguely the design in the Stitchcraft version, but with the pattern and the stitch counts from that classic jersey pattern. So I've gotten this far on one of them. And then I realized, oh, I kind of want the rib at least for the front and the back to match. I don't want the front and the back to match. We're doing it proper scrap busting style. It will, it will just be a bit pick and mix in that sort of way. But I did knit the rib in the red because I thought that really, I wanted those to match at least. So yeah, I kind of got this far. I did this while watching Glastonbury. And then I realized that it was sort of coming up to the year anniversary and I should really finish some things. So I'm kind of doing finish it July, <laughs> if you like, just because I'd really like to feel like I've made some progress, at least anyway. As well, with so many bits going wrong in the past two months, I just, I'm, I'm desperate for like a sense of satisfaction. And one of my last big knitting projects as well in that lacy blouse went hideously wrong several times as well and I just am feeling a little bit demoralized shall we say and I just I need a, I need a win I need a win uh with my knitting and quickly so really what I want to do is sort of come up with a plan see what I've got that's going to be really easy to finish off so I can sort of tick some things off my list a little bit this month. And I think I'm going to start with the Maywick. So I'm going to carry on solely knitting on that one for now and see how quickly I can get it done. And then hopefully there'll be some time left in July to finish off some other things. So as of last night, I have my first finished object of July and it's the Maywick jumper from the Shetland Trader book. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out in terms of the stripes. I was a bit worried because the contrast is quite low between some of my greys and beiges, um, but actually it just sort of makes the other stripes pop and I quite like that, this pattern. <laughs> so there was just a chunk of instructions missing when it came to doing the short row shaping. Now I'm not a frequent short row shaper. I didn't really know what I was doing and I was sort of just like, oh, great, okay. Uh... <laughs> so I made it up. I then remembered that like erratas are a thing. So I looked online for the errata and I had basically done it right. But somehow I ended up with my back being a stripe longer than my front, which means that at the shoulder, I have different colours when I was supposed to have the same colour. It was supposed to be all blue, I think, and I've got a little grey section here on the back. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they're so low contrast, I don't think it really notices. Yep, I'm still not a big fan of making jumpers this way in the round. I grafted together my underarms, uh, which they did include instructions for, so that's nice. But yeah, I, this was not a pleasant knit partly because of the way I made it with the weird simultaneous sleeve colour changes uh, and my having to change my interchangeable needles over every two rows. <sighs> that was, yeah. 
it was a, it was an ingenious decision but after about four rows it I realized what I was getting myself into yeah there are some mistakes I ended up with my sleeves being sort of not quite in the right place and I'm also frust I was so frustrated with this pattern because I knit a lot of vintage patterns where it's just like decrease and keep the pattern correct and I expect that from a 1940s pattern. I did not expect that from one of the biggest knitwear publishers going at the minute in Pom Pom magazine, uh, who collaborated with Goodwin Johnson on this book. So that was frustrating because it was just like, keep the pattern correct through all the sleeve shaping, through all the short row shaping. And it's just so difficult to keep track of. Is this, am I doing this decrease now because it's part of the pattern? Or is this a shaping decrease? and then suddenly you have to do two decreases in a row but uh, you don't have enough stitches then so as you can see I've kind of got these weird just sections here with no pattern because the only way I found I could do it was to just sort of abandon uh, this sort of half done pattern repeat so I don't I don't love that kind of gap and I just wish just wish they'd included a bit more like there's a, there's a note which is like, oh yeah, you'll have an incomplete pattern repeat, but I wish they'd included like, in which case, do this. Because it yes, it varies for the size you're making, whether you're going to have an incomplete repeat or not, and how incomplete it's going to be. But I wish they'd sort of given you just a little bit more guidance, uh, because this was... <laughs> just annoying really. <sighs> the other annoying thing is the yarn requirements they gave was obviously an overestimation because it used, I was expecting to use seven and a half skeins of yarn and I've used four. And hilariously the the quantities, I've tallied up the quantities of the things that I've used, you know the, the balls of wool I no longer have to show you, and that equals more than what the jumper itself actually weighs on the scale. So I don't know if I've like accidentally included something in my tally, but I'm saying we've used four skeins of wool because I can't find the yarn anyway, so it's either lost or it's in the jumper. So we started July on 155.5 skeins of yarn and we are now down to 151.5. So one whip down and I've pulled out all the others and put them on the bed uh, to decide what I want to do next because I have eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, seven. <sighs> oh, I suppose technically eight. Let's talk about them. So first of all, of course, we have this crochet blanket which has been hibernating for about six months uh, because of course it previously went horribly wrong and I spent ages repairing it and sort of made right pig's ear out of it and I just haven't been able to face it. However, if I do finish this blanket, that'll be 20 skeins of yarn down. And how many have I actually got left? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Naturally, crochet eats yarn pretty quickly, so I could realistically finish this probably by the end of July. However, do I want to work on a very thick, heavy blanket in July? Also, I can't crochet for any length of time without getting repetitive strain. The idea of like just having to focus on that entirely for July isn't floating my boat. But I would like to get it a bit further along because it's annoying me that oh, the idea of being 20, tw yeah, 20 balls of wool down. Anyway, and I think part of the reason I feel like that is because all my other projects are all fine gauge ones. So I've got the Victorian stocking, which is two ply the 1930s daisy maker one which again is like three ply four ply the hexi puff quilt which is another massive long-term project and is using sock weight four ply yarn the pretty weldon's gloves as they were called something like that and the reason i've stalled in this one is because i'm not sure it's going to fit so i need to sew this up because it's sort of like this currently this glove to see if it will actually fit however i think the reason i've been procrastinating so long on this is because i know it's not it's not going to fit it's going to be too small <laughs> maybe i just frog it and just put this back in the stash for something else although i don't know what in this project bag we, bag, we still have the knitted corset which i haven't done any more on however this yarn I didn't originally count in my stash busting total because I was like, oh, work is in progress, don't count. <laughs> so even if I finish, I mean, I have two of these. These were Cascades 50 grams and I have one more panel like this basically to knit. So I'm definitely going to have a lot left over. So I'm sort of like out of sight, out of mind with that one. And then I've got this 
uh, intarsia one I've been working on, which I, I mean could be an option for me to focus on because it would grow pretty quickly. We're using number 10 needles, so that's like 3.25. So besides the crochet blanket, it's probably like the best, the heaviest weight one. And I would probably be like five skeins of yarn down by the end of the month. So that's a contender. The other thing I started, I am, um, I haven't been known what to do with like the tiny little bits like this. And I've sort of been hoarding them, hoping I'll think of something to do with them. And then I found this, um, what I know as a knitting dolly, or it's also known as French knitting. I don't know why lots of things are called French by the English that are probably not actually French. And I had one of these when I was a kid and I loved it, but I never knew what to do with this as it came out. And then I sort of realized it's, it's a sort of chainette yarn. And I still have those incredibly chunky needles from when I made the tea rose slip on. Uh, there's a pattern on Ravelry, link in the description. It's free if you want to make your own. So, what I thought I might do is in sort of an ultimate stash busting patchwork make do and mend sort of sweater is put all my tiny weeny scraps through my knitting dolly and then use this as a yarn to knit another tea row slip on or something similar. As much as I liked that project I didn't really like the fit, so I might have to tweak the design. But of course, this is very time consuming, although completely addictive. And I have sort of contemplated the fact that this is basically an eye cord, so I could be knitting this probably much quicker. But because this knitting dolly was, I believe, my Tanta Ingrid's, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just like a nice to be using this sort of vintagey gadget. I'm using a, a, what I would call the Kirby grip bobby pin here. Could probably use a crochet hook and it might be easier. Anyway, terrible lighting, sorry, but I had to sit down. Um, basically, those are my options. Normally what happens when I finish a whip, I'm like, great, I can cast on something else. And I've got that feeling now, I want something new, which is not great seeing as I've just cast on something new quite recently. But honestly, none of these are really floating my boat. I'm in quite a weird place now with my health as well because having done all those amazing things I talked about in my update video, I'm paying for it now, aren't I? So I've had quite a sort of rocky few days over the past month and um, I need to take it a bit easier. But that's so hard when you, you feel less shit. <laughs> so um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <sighs> so I sat here for about an hour staring at everything, unable to make a decision, and then I did what every indecisive YouTuber does. I did a poll <laughs> on Instagram and on YouTube. I made a little short, and interestingly, um, I narrowed it down to three options, the crochet blanket, the daisy blouse, and my new 1940s project. And uh, interestingly, I waited a little while before I got some responses in, and as of two o'clock today, YouTube, wants to go for the 1930s daisy blouse, but Instagram, the crochet blanket. So I don't know, maybe I should ta add them all up. If I add them all up, I think the daisy blouse wins. So I think that's possibly what I might go for, but it's been pretty tight and there've been votes, the votes are pretty evenly distributed. So I'm just pleased that everybody's excited to see what I'm making basically. <laughs> Can you imagine if everybody been like, ugh, don't do any of those. <laughs> Welcome back. I apologize if you can hear the torrential rain. What can I say? <laughs> July, am I right? Things might look a bit different. You might notice the posters have gone. They were movie posters. And if you didn't know, my day job uh, is a freelance costume maker. I do mostly theatre stuff, but I have taken film and TV commissions. So for me, it's just sort of personal solidarity with um, striking writers and actors. I'm hoping to get some replacements, something. 
equally atmospheric, shall we say. But yeah, for the time being, no struck work on this channel. You might also notice... Do you know what that is? <laughs> Before we get onto that, you might have seen... I did a short. Look at me. Who am I? I still haven't been able to block my May wick yet because like the dry weather has not lined up with my energy or like schedule. Basically, I've either been busy on sunny days or I've not been well enough to do that sort of thing. So it's, it's still unblocked, which means it's still a bit snug. So I'm still not quite really able to satisfyingly tick that one off as a, as a finished work in progress. But I'd also sort of committed to doing a bit more work in progress work in July. But I had decision paralysis, so I followed my own advice in my Sewing with a Disability video and I asked the internet for help. And I made a little short, or you might have seen it on Instagram as well, as a reel to ask everybody in the audience's opinion what they thought I should work on next or what they wanted to see next. And the overwhelming winner, I mean, it was tight, but like if you combined Instagram results and YouTube results, the overwhelming winner was the 1930s daisy blouse. And I was already in set to work non-stop on that project. And then I did some maths and I realised um, I needed to make 280 more daisies. And that was at a rate of about 20 daisies a day to finish just making the daisies in July, not crocheting them together, not knitting the rib, you know, just non-stop daisy making. And that prospect didn't fill me with joy. I actually did what a lot of people suggested, which is to work on all three at once. And I actually found that really helped keep me interested and engaged and all those sorts of things. So I think I managed to make 90 daisies in July, which I'm sort of a third of the way there. So I'm happy enough with that. But I also was able to finish my crochet blanket. And what I hadn't realized was how close to done I was. Part of the thing was, the chevrons have a pattern repeat, so I have eight stripes of white and then I have a section of eight stripes again, which is alternating two blue, two white, two blue, two white, and then eight of blue, and then an alternating section again, and then a white section again. And I was halfway to sort of finishing a pattern repeat and ending on white when I started picking this up again. So um, I had a decision, I could either finish that repeat and then do another whole repeat or I could just finish the one I was and call the blanket done. And it actually worked out perfectly square if I just finished the pattern repeat. And I quite like my blankets square because I tend to put them on my bed and I don't like them to like come higher up than my chin. I'm only a short person, I guess. And because I have so many pillows on my bed, it looks really bumpy if I put the blanket over the pillow. So I like the blanket to stop before I get to the, the cushions and the pillows. And it, it was just the perfect size for that. And so it sort of was like, oh, I'm done. I think, I think the blanket's done. And I couldn't believe it because this project has been hanging over me for so long and it went wrong in so many ways that it was maybe like, oh, how many rows of crochet was it? Six, seven and a half. It was probably about 10, 10 rows of crochet and it was done. So I've I actually finished this about the 20th of July. <laughs> And it was like, I couldn't believe how quickly it all came together. And now the sun's come out and it's going to ruin the lighting on my video. Bloody hell. But part of that decision was that it does mean I've got a lot of yarn left. I ha I'm not entirely sure just how much I've used. I've still got some scrappy bits. So I need to weigh up, see how much exactly I've got left. And then I can take what is hopefully going to be quite a large number of balls of wool off my stash busting total for July. As for the sort of mystery intarsia as you go vintage jumper I'm working on, I'm not loving it, I must admit, and I'm not sure if it's just because stocking stitch is a little bit dull, even if you are doing intarsia, or if I've just sort of been doing so many other engaging projects that I'm just sort of a bit uninspired by it but it's definitely tv knitting you know i sort of like veg out and i do a few rows every now and again but i'm not really in a hurry to finish that one uh so i'm quite happy to like let it trot along at a gentle pace really but the other snag i have run into when it comes to the daisy blouse is of course 
stash busting the amount of yarn. <laughs> so it's just really difficult. If you're using a vintage pattern and you can't find information about the suggested yarn in terms of meterage, it's always a bit of a stab in the dark. I knew for this project, one of the things I would have to do, the yarn I decided to use, I'd originally started, it was much bigger than this. I've unraveled quite a lot of it, making this willow pattern fair isle jumper from a vintage pattern i'll put the um the vintage pattern there and i decided i just didn't i just didn't like it it wasn't me i didn't like the colors together i didn't like the way it looked um as well you can sort of see the the blue through the white and i mean that always happened that does happen with fair isle if you have a darker and a lighter color and the lighter color is sort of the background color but I just, oh, I just didn't love it. And I was, I sort of got almost to the end of the front panel and the prospect of doing it again and then two sleeves. I was just like, mm, nah, I'm frogging it. But as I've been quickly running out of yarn to make my daisies, because I still have to crochet all the daisies together as well, I realised I needed to start frogging this so that I had a better idea of where I was in terms of yarn left. <laughs> But, um, but frogging Fair Isle, it's just not fun. And the other thing is the white, as I've been unraveling it, the white has picked up quite a lot of blue fluff. So the daisies I have since made from the unpicked white wool, they have a real blue tinge to them compared to the ones that I made from the yarn that wasn't from the unpicked wool. <sighs> so I've still got, what, 190 basically daisies to make. And I don't know, I have this much and I have what you see here. So I've used already about 75 grams to make not even half of the daisies and crochet 80 of them together. It's looking tight, isn't it? Also, as you can see, I'm like improvising like mad. I've got me blue wrapped around a hairspray can and I've got a book um, stretching out my white. Oh, I just... I make things difficult for myself, don't I? I'm realising that now. And I suppose, but that is... I keep saying this, that's the nature of stash busting. But I think that is the thing and that is why I've wanted to do it is for that extra challenge. I can buy yarn and knit vintage jumpers anytime I like. It's the extra sort of problem solving aspect of it that appeals to me. Just does get a little bit dull at times. If I'm honest, I've also been struggling. I've just not really been in like a knitting sort of mood, maybe because it's summer. I'm getting to a point now where I do feel a little bit like how many vintage short sleeve jumpers can I knit in my lifetime? I mean, I have several already that I like and love and wear and I don't have the space to store them. So I am battling a little bit like with the overconsumption nature of it and seeing just how much yarn I have bought and the things I'm able to produce with the yarn I have. It's not guilt, I don't feel guilty about it, but it's it does feel unnecessary to me somehow. I think that's what it is. I like to make things that fill a need in my life and my need for vintage jumpers has been filled now and there are always more I want to knit, but it has gotten to the point where I am questioning whether it's something I want to continue to do. Is it the best use of my time and resources to make endless vintage jumpers for myself, basically? I don't really have an answer to that one. I also think I've really been enjoying crochet actually at the minute, more so than knitting. And that's left me in a difficult position because there aren't a massive amount of crochet patterns or items I want to make or that I like the style of. And so having finished this massive blanket, I've mostly crocheted blankets. If I have crocheted things, I have several of them that I have made in my, in my life. I don't have space or use for any more. And so... I'm starting to get to this point now where I'm finding it hard to justify my making. And you don't have to justify your making, but I like to. So I, I, need to, I need to figure some things out and maybe I start making things for other people. Maybe I start giving things away because I'm always going to want to knit and crochet things. There isn't ever going to be a, a time in my life where I'm not doing some sort of yarn craft because uh, it's part of who I am now. But also, it feels a little bit like dragon hoarding to me to like just just make all this stuff that I don't really use that doesn't see the light of day, you know? Yeah. I'm probably overthinking it. <laughs> What's new there? Anyway, the blanket is finished. I need to weigh everything up and do the totals. I will at some point block the Maywick jumper and model it for you so you can see what the finished one looks like. Let's hope 
that between now and when this video goes up, it stops raining. That would be nice, wouldn't it? An August with some sunshine in Britain? Can we dare to dream? <laughs> okay, well, um, I thought I had more of this white left than I appear to, so <sighs> if I find it, I'll add it on. But let's see combined how much of this we have left. So that's 16 grams. So from a 50, 16, 34, yeah, 34 grams. So that's more than half a skein, isn't it? Mind you, I've done quite a lot of rounding, so let's call that half a skein. And so six blue, eight white, Six plus eight is 14, minus a half is 13.5. Oh, great, look at that. Put my notebook down on the table and I've gotten brown sauce on it or something. 13.5, not as much as I had hoped, given I had 20 skeins of this, but better than nothing. So minus 13.5 for the chevron blanket again. And I checked, I wasn't sure if I had previously included the ones I'd used for the chevron blanket, but I looked through my notes and it turns out I did. Ripple blanket there, minus 19. So 151.5 take 13.5, so that's what it's gonna be, take uh, 50 would be 37, 38, 138. Oh, that feels like progress, you know. I'm gonna have to do that in the calculator though because I'm not entirely sure. And I, used to be really good at a mental arithmetic and I don't beat myself up anymore when I have to check things. So 138 skeins of yarn left in the stash for August 2023. So it's been over a year now we've been stash busting. My original total was 164, 50 gram skeins. And then I actually forgot about things that were on cones and it went up to 184 uh, and a quarter. So 46 and a bit skeins of yarn we've been able to get rid of. I don't really know what I was expecting to be able to achieve in, the year, in a year, but it was more than that. I wanted to get to under 100. That's been my aim all along. I felt like that's a more manageable place for me. But the reality is I've bought things, things have come up, things haven't worked out and I've had to buy a yarn. Well, I haven't had to, but I've wanted to buy yarn to make things to be a higher standard or a standard that I'm happier with. Has this made me more creative? in my knitting. I do think so. I've definitely tried some techniques I wouldn't have otherwise tried as a result of doing this. Um, I've tried some patterns I wouldn't have otherwise tried. But I am at the end of the day a creature of habit and I keep coming back to the vintage mid-century, early 20th century patterns that are the reason I got into knitting in the first place. So in a way, that's been useful for me because I know I like to knit at a lighter weight, at a lighter gauge. So there's no point me impulse buying chunky yarn. That being said, I'm wearing this cardigan and I have a second version of this and they are my most worn knits probably. And they're both like worsted weight. So another one of those words I really struggle with because I really struggle with O sounds. Worst, 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 worst. See, I go like Worcestershire sauce, worsted. But is it more like war, like an A? Worsted? Wurst as well, that's German. <laughs> Wursted? No. Worsted? Worsted. 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 Worsted? Oh, fucking hell, I don't know. But all the double knit that I have in my stash has mostly stayed untouched through this whole process. I've made very few double knit things, partly because I need to do some dyeing, which again, I was hoping to do in the summer when the weather was nice. I also have been wondering whether after a year, it's time to start thinking about donating or selling some of my stash because I'm sort of scraping the barrel for inspiration at the minute. So my, my concern about that is I'm not, particularly well off you know I don't have a lot of money and I'm, I'm very open about that and my yarn stash represents a significant chunk of money 
to me. And so just giving it away feels like it's financially not an option for me, particularly because if I use it for a project in a video, that video can sit on YouTube and make me a little bit of money every month. And it's almost like an investment. So I could turn the money I've invested into my stash that's just sat there into a recurring income for myself if I knit it up and make a video about it, which makes a lot more financial sense to some for somebody who's on as low an income as I am. I also do feel though, I've gotten this far after a year of all this work to just donate a load of stuff now does feel a little bit like a cop out, <laughs> I'll be honest. It does feel a little bit like, why did I bother knitting all those things I wasn't interested in if I'm just gonna donate a load of stuff? Because the challenge, this is why I'm doing it, the challenge. I don't know, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, what you think I should do. Shall I start selling things? Shall I donate things? Shall I swap things? I know there's a swap option on Ravelry. Or is part of the appeal of this series seeing me find projects and work on projects that I wouldn't normally work on or that use yarns in a creative and exciting way. Because at the rate I have knitted in the past year, it's going to take me another year at least to get below 100. And that's a long time to be knitting things I'm not excited about anyway. I'll leave you with some footage of the things I have managed to finish this month to um, ponder those questions over. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Look ahead, the sea is calm and I know we've been through a lot but just wait. Mm, wait for better days to come and carry us like wind. Dream.